We can get it all dry stuffed, which means like we said this morning, all these holes with sushi rolls or bullets or wads. Um, then Kendra's gonna come through with the weed eater and do a quick trim. And then we're gonna make slip, which we already started screening over there. And then we're gonna smear this whole wall with slip. So basically if it rains from now on, unless it's just crazy driving rain, we won't have to tarp anymore because that slip's gonna protect our straw. So it's a really good thing if we can get that done to that point today. And also it's, it's pretty fun and kind of a good way to end. So we are not going to plaster the several layers of plaster that this building will take today. But what we can do is if we can get, and you know, there's a few ba bales still in parts of the wall that people are working on. If you wanna finish that up, feel fine doing that. But we wanna try to get this all stuffed, <laughs> trimmed, and then we wanna try to get a smear coat on it. And as you guys are putting the smear coat on, I'm gonna talk about plaster because we can't do all the layers today, but I know people wanna know. So I can just sit over there and ramble on for hours while y'all are in your zen happy place. <laughs> I am. Well, if anybody else wants to. I really like to do this, so. Um, Topsoil is really nutrient rich and it's good for plants. So we like to keep that for gardening and use the stuff below that isn't as useful. So generally, after you get the topsoil off and you dig something up, I just start playing with it. And there's, I mean, there's tests. You can send it to a lab. It'll tell you how much clay. You can do a shake test. You can find that online, which means putting some soil in a jar, adding water, adding a little salt or soap to break the surfactant, and you shake it up, and then you watch it settle out. And the first 10 seconds is, the big aggregate and so on. And so you can tell that way. But generally, I just play with it because that tells me more than anything. So if you guys want to do this, everybody get a handful. And this is the best way to know. Clay um, is sticky and it actually has, when it gets wet, a bit of a positive charge. And so that's one of the things that helps it stick together. Um, so you could clay is sticky also silt is sometimes sticky and silt is just really tiny rock that's been broken down but it will not give you the stick when it dries that a clay will so what i notice to find clay i feel stick you can see if it'll stick to your hand that's a pretty good indicator you can roll it into a worm see if it'll roll into a worm I've got some big rocks and you can kind of bend it. If it starts to break, there's maybe a little less clay. This is not very wet. Um, and then if it's really wet, you hear that. Oh. Of it being real sticky. Like, when you pull, open your hand, it'll go. And sand, you know, if you have a bunch of sand when you when you rub it, it's real crunchy. You can just hear all those grains crunching against each other. So this, to me, is there's a lot more stick than crunch. And then the ultimate way to know what the strength is gonna be is to, to just roll this in a ball and let it dry in the sun and see what happens. Like, does it crack? You could smear it on the wall and let it dry and see what happens. How hard is it when it dries? I mean, that tells you the most. Like, if you actually use it and let it dry out and see what happens, you know, I can get a lump number back from a lab that tells me it's 30% clay, but I don't really know what that means, even if I know that. So if I put it on a wall and it dries and doesn't crack and it's hard, that's all I need to know. So, so this has got a decent amount of clay in it. And so we're gonna use it for slip. And so the way we're making slip, there's a lot of rock in this. I mean, there's a lot of rock on the ground. So we're running it through the screen which is essentially a wood frame that's been made and has what's called contractor mesh on it, or builder screen, which you can buy at the hardware store in lots of different sizes. That's probably what, half inch maybe? So, you know, that's a pretty big screen for us. You're basically getting big rocks out. Anything smaller than half an inch is going through. But we're all right with that. Um, so when I dip my hand in, I wanna see it like coat it like a rubber glove. And if it's too thin, it'll just kind of drip off. So there's a lot of leeway in this. So what we want to do is take this pile 
and make buckets of this. So all you have to do is add water and mix it up. And if it's too thin, add more of that. If it's too thick, add more water. Um, I recommend if you guys brought gloves, you may want to start using these guys now. You don't have to. Did you say if you make the one break, it's play or if it doesn't break? It doesn't break. other shape. You don't have to have them. I mean, for doing it for a couple of hours, it's probably not going to be too bad. So essentially, you're just going to take some and work it in. And you really want to push it in. You know, you want to work it where it's kind of wrapped in that straw, not just, you don't want to just be like, ah, here we go. Because part of the point is you want to, once this dries, it's going to firm up this whole layer. If you really work it in. And it's going to kind of tell us where there's dips and bumps and it's going to make this kind of hard skin so when we come back and plaster with a trowel we've got a hard substrate to work against right now if you use a trowel on this it's going to be bouncing and flipping and peeling off so yep just you know try you know it does we're going to drop some but covering the wood with burlap uh, I, we have this new stuff that I just found out about. It's a coconut fiber mesh that's actually an erosion control uh -huh. material. Because we have burlap and we can bring it out and show you. Um, but yeah, we'll do it in the midst of the next coat of okay. plaster. Okay. So, um, so a natural mesh that gets that has some holes so you have something to stick to. Um, a lot of conventional construction uses metal lath, which is what was wrapped around those rasps, blood laugh. So, um, and you know, sometimes we do this, I probably do it more than Kendra does, but um, a lot of natural builders try not to use laugh. It's one of the things about um, metal in a straw bale wall is that metal, um, there's condensation on metal. Um, so at certain temperatures, especially because we have lots of temperature swings in Texas where it'll be really hot and then cold and then hot, you'll get condensation on that metal. And so then you have water condensing in your walls that can actually run down and create rot. Um, also, metal expands at different, at, you know, when it gets hot or cold. And so with that movement, it kind of works itself away from that plaster and you get the separation and your plaster wants to peel off of it. So it seems that in the long run, sometimes it just doesn't work as well. So at the beginning of the bucket, you know, it's like real liquidy. Yeah. At the end, it's... Yeah, so once it starts thickening up, you can either add more water at that point or you can just go make more. Okay. But not because even. once you start getting really thick, what's yeah. gonna happen is a lot of crack. Oh. Which isn't such a bad thing. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but there's just, there's no advantage to super thickness. Gotcha. It's really just a watery. Yeah, it's just about getting a protective coat and getting it to firm up. All right. When I take the bucket. Go for it. We could just dip into this puddle. Would that be okay? Yeah. <laughs> to add some water? Of course. We don't need that puddle anyway. I'm tired of stepping in it. <laughs> <laughs> and then just work it in there. And then it'll dry and harden, whereas loose so straw would just want to fall out. Mm -hmm. And that saves us like a handful yeah. size of plaster right there. Kalichi makes really strong plaster and there's a lot of it around. We're also doing lime on the exterior here and Kalichi has some limestone in it and so it it tends to do well with lime. They like each other and want to be friends so um, that's probably what we're going to do. On the interior where we're doing clay plaster, they really like the red mm -hmm. and I don't know they haven't maybe totally decided on color it's gonna be clay because it's so protected and I think they want the red